calculating the distance something travels and, and all of the different kinds of problems related to the changing of an object's position um, all of that is a very fundamental part of physics and it's really not that complicated to do um, at, at the level of it's 180 miles to grandma's house and we're traveling 60 miles an hour how long does it take to get there it's almost intuitive however to be more complete sometimes we need to kind of break the problem down and and make it um, a little more specific and so we're going to work through different ways of dealing with uh, the changing of, of position of an object. We're going to look at different ways that those are calculated and the way the questions are phrased. And so that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. To get started with the physics of motion, um, we, we, we look at position as being where an object is. And then motion would be when that posi position changes. And, and, and so um, we end up with an initial position and a final position. And so um, if this would be, we'll call this P1, and this is P2. So motion is when an object, whatever it is, a car, a truck, a rocket, an electron, you know, a planet, whatever, if it goes from P1 to P2, it's moved. Obvious, that's, you know, definition of motion. No surprise there. Well, in, in physics, we, we can call this the change in position, or delta P, if you want. Um, but most of the time, we're just going to call this, this change in position, the measure of from here to here, we're, we're going to call that D. Most of the time, we're going to call it D. Now, there are going to be scenarios and cases where we're going to look at, at D um, in, in relationship to something else. And, and the example I always use in class is, I'm, uh, I'm 300 yards from McDonald's, so here's the Golden Arches McDonald's, and here's 300 yards, and here's P1. And then if I go another 500 yards and I reach P2, and now I have changed this, this distance, and sometimes it is looked at as a change in distance, because it's changing the distance relative to McDonald's. So this could be delta D, change in distance. Now, getting our head around this idea of change in position is going to lead us into the next part of physics, which is going to be calculating what that change in distance or change in position is. And so uh, what we want to do is, is we want to know how fast something is moving and how long does it move and that's going to tell us the, 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 the magnitude of the position change or it's going to tell us the distance that it moved. So um, that's, that is actually the intuitive part of, of physics is like grandma's house is 180 miles from here, I'm going 60 miles an hour three hours. Or if you say, I'm riding my bicycle at 20 miles per hour, I ride it at 20 miles per hour for three hours, I've gone 60 miles. Very, very intuitive. So, so what that looks like in a formula is the distance traveled is equal to the velocity at which you're traveling multiplied by the time that you travel. Very simple. So if the velocity is 20 and the time is 3, 20 times 3 is 60. And, and this is like the, the, the most elementary form of the physics problem. We can complicate it as you do in science. I say that, I say that kind of you know, tongue in cheek. In order to cover more situations, we can add more complexity and more detail to the problem. So that we can say that the total change in position is calculated 
um, by knowing where something is to start with and how far it moves. So let's go to, to the more generalized version and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna use D and we're going to say the final distance the final distance that something travels the final distance that something has moved is an equal to however far it was to start with plus however much it changed. So back to McDonald's. If I start 300 from McDonald's, that's my initial distance, and I change my position by 500, my new total distance, my final distance, is going to be 300 plus 500 because the initial distance plus the change in distance, okay? So, so let's, let's look at that as, as a uh, legitimate example problem. So if we say um, a satellite is initially 10,000 meters from the space station. So the initial distance from the space station is 10,000 meters. And let's say that it moves, so the change in position, and you can do delta P, or, but I'm going to use delta D because it, it kind of leads us into the, the, the science that we're going to be going for. So if, if the change in distance, delta D, delta is... For some reason, scientists decided delta means change. I had a teacher once tell me it's because it starts small at the top and then it changes and gets wider, and that's how you know it's delta. I don't know if that's really why they chose delta, but that's what one of my teachers told me one time. It kind of made sense. It's small at the top, and it changes as it goes down. Anyway, delta D, change in position. If, if it's initially 10,000 meters and the change in position is let's say 5,000 meters. So the final distance, d sub f equals d sub i plus delta d. Plug the numbers in. So here's my relevant formula. Here's my given equation. So d sub i is 10,000. So d sub f equals 10,000 plus 5,000. And that means that d sub f equals 15,000. And I left my units out, but we can put those back in. And there's my final answer. The final distance is 15,000. So that's very simple. If they tell you what the change in position is, they tell you what delta d is, you just add it to the initial distance. Now, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of times, initial distance is going to be zero. So we'll say the train leaves the station at 5 o'clock and it travels for three hours. How far has it gone after three hours? In a case like that, we're saying, what is the change in position when it starts at the train station? And we're using the train station for both the, you know, that's the, our relative mark. The initial position is at the train station, distance of zero. That, 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 is very, that simplifies it a great deal. So we'll stop there for video one with, with the, the understanding that the, the, the total distance or the final distance something is from a, a point of reference is found by knowing how far it is from that point of reference and how far it moves. That is, d sub f, the final distance, is equal to the initial distance plus the change in distance. So we'll, we'll end this video with that. And we'll pick up how to find the, how to calculate change of distance in, in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Do that like, comment, share thing. And we'll see you in the next uh, segment.